Amen. And family again, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But glory. God to revive us. Amen. Bethel Chapel needs revival. Amen. Yeah, maybe you're here this week and you came to family camp and said, I need God to do something in my life this week at family camp. Maybe you're a pastor, a preacher, evangelist, think I need the Lord to do something in my life this week at family camp. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe the Lord's going to help you. I really believe the Lord's going to help you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Looking forward to a wonderful week. Amen. I'm thankful that the Lord turned the temperature down just a little bit for us. Just a little bit. Amen. Maybe if you get the week's over, he'll, he'll bless us with just turning it back just a little bit more. And uh, wow, thank the Lord for that, right? Praise the Lord. And uh, I believe we'll have a good week. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow morning, breakfast will be at 8 o'clock in the morning. Good breakfast. And uh, I want you to come over and enjoy breakfast with us. If you're staying at, the, you're staying at a motel and uh, they provide a breakfast, you know what? You're, we're going to have better fellowship out here. So just, just come on out. And uh, you won't have to sit there and, and listen to people talk politics, all that kind of stuff. Man, you won't have to have some reporter up, up above you up somewhere talking in your ear. Man, you can just come and be around God's people and have a good breakfast right around the campground, all right? Eight o'clock. Amen. We'll need some servers to help us out in the morning, if you would. Servers, if you could go over about 7 to 15, and you can get the early breakfast, all right? And if you survive, then we'll come in at 8 and we'll eat it. All right? But 7 15, if we can get some people to go over it eat early and help serve the breakfast. We'd appreciate that very much. And uh, then tomorrow morning at 1030 will be our morning service with Brother Ryan Ralston. Looking forward to that. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, give Brother Ralston a good hand. Brother Ralston's a good friend of mine, but I'll tell you what, he has blessed our camp over the years been a real help to us and I, I really appreciate his ministry here and the word indebted to them. Glad that they could come all the way, all the way from South Georgia to be with us in this week of family camp. The long drive. And guess what? He just got out of camp last week, preaching camp last week in Broxton, Georgia. Got home Saturday morning. Sister Ralston did the laundry and they packed back up and here they are in the Day. Amen. God bless it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I appreciate them being here. That'll be at 1030 in the morning. And uh, uh, if you would like to come early, we'd like to come early and pray around, around the altars before the service in the morning. It's time to do that. You can come in and uh, pray around the altar. Maybe you finish up breakfast. Come on over and get in the air-conditioned tabernacle. And linger around the altars. Amen. Seek the Lord. And I believe the Lord, will, the Lord can speak to your heart, prepare your heart for what the Lord's going to do in the morning service. Amen. And uh, we'll let Brother Ralston go first in the morning like we always do. And then if we have time, we're going to have Brother James Kane and from Arkansas. Amen. He's going to be speaking to us as well. So we're looking forward to Brother Kane. So glad to have him and his family with us. This is our first year. Thank you he sent his young people to youth camp before he had even came here to check it out. Amen. I don't know if he was, you know, sending them as like a lamb to the slaughter and see what happens. If they come home okay, then maybe he'll come, you know. But uh, we are so glad to have him and his family with us this week. And uh, Lord willing, we'll hear him tomorrow as well. All right? Amen. Then about 1 o'clock we'll have lunch tomorrow, a good dinner. Wasn't that dinner good today? Amen. I'll tell you what, that pork barbecue pork steak, 
corn on the cob. That corn on the cob was just amazing and very good and uh, just a wonderful meal. And we'll, I'm sure be more of the same for us tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Amen. Sister Kayla Thomas is doing our children's church in the mornings. That'll be in the morning time, in the morning service. Now, after work, our worship time here together, we'll let the kids go over and uh, join Sister Kayla and uh, they'll have their church time over there together. All right? Is that okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. Put the boys to come and help us. Boys, I'm speaking. The ushers to come. The ushers to come and will receive the offering. These are these are well well taken care of men right here and they're able to do the job, I'm sure. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Be a blessing to Sunset Hill if you would in the camp this week. All right. Amen. Dear Jesus, we love you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege of being here. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done for us. Thank you for all those that traveled so safely to be with us and how you've watched over us and protected us. God, I thank you, Lord God, that you're here in this place, trusting you, Lord, for a mighty move of God. Pray, Lord, that you bless the offering and meet every need. We'll give you glory for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.
privilege to be called a preacher. Yes, amen. It's an honor to be called a preacher. For your wife, or girlfriend, or whatever you can do with that just for an hour or two, you can help us on the platform. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I remember that tone of voice when I was a youth camper down at Elko. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to have Brother Jacob McCoy and his family with us tonight. We appreciate Brother Jacob McCoy evangelizing. Come, Brother Jacob, I want you to come if you would too. And you can testify while. Amen. While she's getting ready to sing. Amen. Appreciate it. Brother Jacob McCoy, the one who preached for us last night, mine, did such an outstanding, such an outstanding job. Amen. He's available for revivals right now, right, Brother Jacob?
doesn't he? Hallelujah. Amen. He gets so much sweeter every day. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. What the Red Lips get ready to sing for us tonight, if they would, while they're coming to get ready to sing, I want Brother Blue to come out and greet you tonight. So good to have Brother Blue home. Amen. We miss him when he's gone, but it's good to have you home, Brother Blue. Come and greet the people tonight. Amen. Appreciate Brother Mike Blue. Appreciate my pastor. Appreciate my home church. We're glad to be here tonight. We're looking forward to what God wants to do in the service. I already feel his presence, don't you? And in his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand is pleasures forevermore. I'm glad to find that pleasure that only comes from Almighty God. To be in the presence of the Lord tonight is rewarding. And uh, I believe in I believe in this, this camp meeting crowd, don't you? Gathering together in various places around the country, drawing churches together to seek the Lord together, worship together, hear the preaching of the word, the challenges, take us closer, deeper, higher. I believe in camp meetings, don't you? I'm glad to be at Sunset Hill. And uh, I, I just, I like the name Sunset Hill. And, uh, and I say that because we were at a camp just a few weeks ago that uh, was out in a place called Putin Swamp. And they called it Putin Swamp Camp. You know, God moved at Putin Swamp. So if he can move at Putin Swamp, don't you think he can move at Sunset Hill? Amen. We've been in three youth camps this summer and uh, saw the Lord moving in, in a variety of ways. And I'm, I'm glad to report from, uh, from what we've seen around the country that God's not dead. He's still alive. He's still moving on behalf of his people. Last week we were we were at a kids camp up in Ohio, Camp Dove. Some of you have heard of it, maybe been there. One of my favorite places because it's unusual. They deal with the children. They, the target age there is seven to eleven year olds, and and uh, it's just a wonderful time. They do all of the kids crusade type stuff in the day, and at night they just have church. And so uh, we preach and pray and and. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I, I'm glad to tell you tonight that uh, God fills children with the Holy Ghost. And I think it was Tuesday night, the Spirit of God moved and uh, interrupted all of our plan and program and came down. I saw those little children, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old, all around these altars, the Holy Ghost falling on them. Amen. Many of them were getting saved. Many of them were drawn, being drawn close to God. Many of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. And mixed right in there with moms and dads and teenagers that were getting help from God. What we need is a move of God, don't we? I'm glad that, that God promised us that he'd be with us all the way to the end. One more thing before uh, I step out of the way. Uh, I'd like to ask you to continue to pray for Sister Blue. Some of you have heard that she's been in a battle uh, for about seven weeks now. So uh, continue to uh, pray for her. She is getting better. But it's been a long, painful process, a result of a condition we'd never heard of before that called vasculitis. But uh, she's in a lot of pain in her fingers and uh, in the healing process now. But if you would, remember her in prayer. It's good to be here tonight. I'm looking forward to the rest of this service. Thank you for the blessing of the Lord on my family and on our lives. And so glad to be here tonight. Um, one thing about going to Bethel Chapel, you never <laughs> but I was thinking, uh, reminiscing uh, about last year, um, my youngest, Carissa, I saw her one night, um, I was helping Sister Ruth sing an altar call, and I saw her come up front and pray, and my mother-in-law was here, and she prayed with her, and she prayed and cried and prayed and cried, and you know, as, a, as when you're raised in church, or at least all my kids pretty much got saved in children's church or Sunday school, you know, really young. And she did. She was probably four, maybe five, when she professed to first be saved. But that night, last year, she said, God saved me tonight. She remembered that. And then uh, later, when we had revival in November, she got filled with the Holy Ghost. And so the Lord can make a difference in your life tonight, just like he did in hers. And uh, you know, when we get saved, I've always heard um, the term, when my burdens were rolled away, you automatically think of when you got saved. 
But you know, we have burdens after we get sick too. And uh, this song says all the doubts and fears and sadness because life keeps happening after we get saved, but God is still there to continue to roll our arms away. I'm so thankful for that.
God. What a joy to have Brother Shad McDonald to come back and be with us again this year. And he's, he helped us so much last year. It was such a blessing. Appreciate Brother McDonald. Amen. I want him to come and preach to you tonight. Amen. Can you just give him a good hand? I appreciate them. They traveled a long way.
you're not going to upset you, can shout amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I read recently of a lady that was uh, at a Lutheran church and something that the uh, minister said really blessed this lady that was visiting. And so aloud she said, praise the Lord. The man behind her tapped her on the shoulder. He was a regular member. He said, ma'am, we don't do praise the Lord here. He said it so loud that another member in front heard what he said, and he turned back and said, yes, we do. It's on page 33. I hope we find page 33 before the service is over. Can you say praise the Lord?
It is of utmost necessity. Prayer is vital. We must be vigilant in our prayer. We must pray perseveringly. We must pray with purpose. We must pray with intent. And when we realize how vital prayer is, and when we continue vigilant in our prayer, we can know what victorious praying is all about. And so on this first night of camp, if you will allow me, please, I want to just encourage your faith that we can be victorious in our prayers. Satan would have us believe that we have to live a defeated prayer life. The adversary of our souls would want us to think that we cannot know the victory that comes through and in and of and by prayer. But I want to tell you there is yet victory for those that will pray. The devil wants to rob you of your prayer life. The devil wants to rob you of victorious praying. But if there is one thing that the church needs to do again, that is pray. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind in heaven shall be bound on earth, shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. There it is. We approach with integrity. We ask with intensity. And then we are answered with immensity. I want to simply say to us the God that we serve is the God of more than enough. The God that we serve is the God that is still able to answer prayer. The God that we serve yet still desires to send us revival. And it's my prayer at this camp that God will send us the revival that brings the rain. God will send us the outpouring of heaven. God will send us the outpouring of glory. God will do it again in our lives. If this church will but pray. If we will but realize there's victory, but it comes by prayer. There's deliverance, but it comes by prayer. There's salvation, but it comes by prayer. There's sanctification, but it comes by prayer. There's Holy Ghost baptism, but it comes by prayer. I believe we can see it in this meeting this week. If I can only find a church that will pray and seek the face of God. Oh, do it again, Lord. Do it again. I'd like to show you a, a picture of Elijah's prayer in three frames. I want to look at the man of prayer, the manner of prayer, and the might of prayer. Watch for it. First of all, the man at prayer. The man at prayer we can evaluate. Let's evaluate this man at prayer. What kind of man was he? Note the text. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. But what about this man? James declares it is the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man that availeth much. There's the answer. Here's the key. Here's the man that prevails in prayer. Here's the man that touches God. A righteous man. A man that is right with God. A man that is on speaking terms with God. And a man that God speaks to. That's the kind of man you're going to have to be. A man that God heard and a man that heard God. That's what prayer is all about. It's communication. It's man talking to God. It's God talking to man. Hey, that's what we've got to do if we're going to have a revival that brings the rain. Is get back to prayer. In a famous art gallery, there hang a painting that was a bit of confusion and consternation to many that visited that art gallery. They would look at that painting and shake their head. Not be 
being able to understand what the painting meant. One day as a number of visitors looked, in confusion and consternation, trying to decipher the meaning of the painting, a man passed by that was a personal acquaintance of the artist, and he stood there for a time, and watched the visitors as they tried to decipher the meaning of the painting, and then he walked over and said, you'll have to kneel to understand. They looked at him quizzically, and again he said, you'll have to kneel to understand. And one by one they knelt, and from the vantage point up below, looking up, they saw something in the painting that they had never seen before, and it opened up to them something beautiful and glorious. May I say, there's a lot of things I don't understand as I look at the portrait and the panorama of life. There's a lot of things going on I can't cipher, and I don't understand, but if I'll kneel, I'll understand. That's what unlocks the door. That's what answers the question. That's the solution to the problem. That's the remedy for the ill. That's the cure for the sickness. And that's what the church needs right now is prayer.
the idolatry before God that he rebuked is followed by the integrity with God that he restored after he prayed that prayer that brought fire he then notice verse 39 when all the people saw it they fell on their faces and they said the Lord he is the God the Lord he is the God and Elijah said unto them take the prophets of Baal watch this let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Watch the words. The prophet of prayer, the prophet of power, he said, let not one of them escape. He knew that before the rain would come, before the revival would come, all the prophets of Baal had to be destroyed. And so he said, let not one of them escape. Careful now, I'm going to sneak up on you here. How many have you let escape? What did you let speak out? When you began to cleanse your heart, when you began to cleanse your home, when you began, amen, to set your face to seek the Lord, what run and hid, and you didn't go take care of it. Will anybody help me preach a while on a Monday night? Hey, I didn't come to play games with you. I come to have care needed. And may I say any sin, anything that would hold you back, anything that would hinder you from a prayer life, you've got to kill it. Because he is praying with the inspiration 
Somebody ought to claim it. Somebody ought to believe it. 
intensity of waiting upon God. This man didn't pray just one time and quit. But he just kept praying until the answer came. It didn't come the first time. It came neither the second time nor the third. Come on now. But yet he perseveres in prayer. Oh, And I 
said, baby. Immediately she turned her eyes toward the door. And he said, I recognized immediately that there was no sight in those dark ruby eyes. And he said with a tremor of my voice, I said, baby, I'm a minister. And I was praying at the church this morning. And the Holy Ghost said, bring you a bill of groceries. She threw her head back and began to rejoice. And she said, praise God, sir. She said, I'm blind. And I'm widowed. And nobody's been here to check on me in a week or more. She said, but I was praying this morning. And the Holy Ghost told me that somebody had been here before the sun went down.
It's yet to be seen. What will happen if we just won't take no for an answer? It's yet to be seen what God will do in this town meeting if we'll pray until the answer comes. Back in 92, oh, that was in the last century. I was in Bristol, Oklahoma, preaching revival for Brother Melvin Duke. One, one night after service, Brother Melvin Duke said, Chad, he said, there's going to be a funeral tomorrow down at Gypsy. Do you want to go? I said, sure, I'll go. He said, Brother Virgil Morris passed. He said, I thought you might want to go. I didn't know Brother Virgil. But when I got there, I found that Brother Virgil was somewhat of a great man. He had migrated to Oklahoma from California when he was just a, a young man. He married and raised a family. And he had been a deacon at the Gypsy Church for over 50 years. And so that particular day, they come from all over the Arkansas, Oklahoma region. Brother Lester Moore, Brother Clarence McDaniel, Brother Carl Page. Brother Ralph Cox, just run on down the east. All those great men were there at day on. And that deacon and that man of God. Sitting on the second row was Sister Morris, Brother Virgil's widow. And when Pastor Larry Wood took the pulpit to preach the funeral sermon, he told his story. He referenced Sister Morris and he said some years ago Sister Morris got down bad sick and he said we the home church here thought that Sister Morris was down to die. He said we didn't think she was going to pull out of it. And he said the Holy Ghost <laughs> moved on Brother Virgil to go on a fast. And Brother Virgil said, I won't touch a bite of food until the Lord raises my wife up. At a mouthful. He was well on into his 70s then. And Brother Virgil said on a fast, Sister Morris just sank lower and lower. Her nerves got bad. She became so frail and frantic. And it seemed like that even company just made her agitated. And Brother Virgil said that while her nerves were so bad and she lay just and so inconsolable, he had done fasting for days and days and days until the children in the church was worried about Brother Virgil. He said, but I told you what the Holy Ghost said. I'm not going to touch a bite of food until God raises her up. And he would go to the church and pray and fast all day, day after day. A Wednesday come around and that's sale day down in the stockyard. And so that particular morning, he said, I felt like that my wife just needed to be by herself. He said, so I just slipped out and went to the sale. And he said, I got there early. And he said, I watched the sale all morning long. And he said, long about noon. He said, I thought, well, I'll ease on back home. And he said, I pulled up in the yard. Hallelujah. And he said, I got out of my old pickup, stepped on the back porch and went into the kitchen. He said, would you believe my wife was standing at the stove and she was a singing and she was just fixing to put the dinner on the table. I'm preaching on the miracle in the meanwhile. That meanwhile means Gary. I know the devil told you it's not going to happen. I 
Thank you.